Hello everyone, I'm Alberto, an assistant professor at the Politecnico di Torino, Italy, and today on behalf of my co-authors I will present you our work on defining and identifying attention capture deceptive designs in digital interfaces. The last few years have seen a growing amount of public discussion and research attention on the negative aspects of overusing technology. And we all know that we are often in a way captured by digital services like social media, video games, even against our will. So the main question here is how these digital services are able to capture our attention so much and in particular if this attention capture can be created by design. And according to some recent studies and experiments, the answer to this last question is yes. Most of you have probably experienced situations in which you mindlessly scroll on your favorite social media newsfeed through this pattern that uh, we call infinite scroll. As long as you scroll down on your smartphone, more random content is continuously and automatically loaded. Or who among us has not experienced the autoplay of the next video on YouTube or the next episode on Netflix? Researchers and practitioners have traditionally called these manipulative mechanisms dark patterns or deceptive designs. There is a growing interest in this topic, especially in the HCI community, um, and starting from the darkpattern.org website created by Harry Brignull, researchers have mainly focused on mechanisms that try to steal money or data from users. We therefore identified a gap that is, the attentional harm and all those dark patterns that are used to capture the user attention have been largely neglected. So, in our work, we conducted a systematic literature review to shed light on the definition, impacts and strategies of what we called attention capture damaging patterns. And we use this name, damaging, to have more inclusive language and also because, as we will see later, only some of these patterns are actually deceptive. And our work resulted in a typology of 11 patterns leading to attentional arm. We also created a website with the typology, attentioncapture.com, to increase the reach of our work among the public, but also among design professionals. Overall, designers use attention capture damaging patterns in digital interfaces to exploit psychological vulnerabilities and capture the attention of the user, aiming to maximize metrics like time spent and interactions. And about the impacts, this can result in the user becoming distracted from their intended goals, losing the sense of time and control, but also experiencing feelings of regret. We can split these patterns into two main categories, deceptive designs and seductive designs. Deceptive designs, as the name suggests, introduce some forms of deception in the user interface, so they deceive users into performing some actions rather than others. A first example is a pattern that we call fake social notifications, that is common across different kinds of digital services, including video games, social media, but also messaging applications. In its basic form, it's a pattern through which a digital platform sends messages pretending to be a real user. Here you can see an example from LinkedIn that through this message uh, asks the user to try a premium plan. And this violates the expectation that messages in a chat should actually be from a real person. Another example is disguised ads and recommendations, which is very common on social media. It accounts for all the situations in which ads, but also recommendations, are disguised as normal content just to increase the chances of prolonging usage sessions. Here in the example, there is a sponsored story on Instagram that resembles a story from a friend, is inserted between other stories, and there is just a tiny sponsored badge on the top left corner that is barely visible. The other category of attention capture damaging patterns is what we call seductive designs, that are patterns that tempt the user with short-term satisfaction without necessarily being deceptive. As an example, this is the Casino Pull to Refresh, a pattern that is common on social media accessed through a mobile interface. When the user swipes down on their smartphone on Facebook, for example, 
there is an animated reload of the page that may or may not reveal new posts. And so users may be tempted to refresh compulsively, hoping to receive new appealing content. Another example, uh, another seductive design, playing by appointment, a pattern through which the user is forced to use a digital service at specific times that are defined by the service rather than the user. Um, and the pattern is often engineered to encourage users to revisit a digital service to avoid losing something like a badge or the possibility of unlocking some achievements. And the example reported in the slide is about Snapchat social streaks, which count how many consecutive days two people have been sending snaps to each other. Here, even a single day without sending a snap breaks the streak. And what about the strategies adopted by attention capture damaging patterns? Well, our review shows that uh, these patterns, especially seductive designs, automate the user experience, reducing the need for autonomous decision making. This is sometimes useful and may also improve usability. However, such a strategy may also be a deliberate design decision to induce experiences of normative dissociation that are all those situations during which we consume content almost unconsciously. For example, the infinite scroll pattern we have seen before is definitely an effective mechanism for browsing information on a smartphone, but also on a computer. However, previous studies highlighted that scrolling infinitely is one of the most common factors that induce users into using social media compulsively with no real purpose. Another strategy that is actually common for any kind of dark pattern is related to the exploitation of cognitive biases and heuristics to manipulate users into actions they would not rationally choose. And in our review, we identified two main techniques targeting user psychology. The first one is the variable reward technique. So many patterns in our typology create the illusion that there is always new exciting content to be consumed. But this is not always true, of course. Here in the example, there is a pattern that we call guilty pleasure recommendations. In this case, YouTube Shorts continuously suggests new video to watch, but still the quality of the next recommendation cannot be predicted by us, at least precisely. So we are trapped in this loop, hoping that the next video will be more exciting than the previous ones. Another psychological target is the salience bias, which means using deceptive visualizations in the user interface to alter in some ways the perception of the user and their actions. Here in the example, there is the time fog pattern through which designers try to reduce the possibilities for users to monitor and be aware of the time they spend on a service. Netflix, for example, decided to show the minutes remaining to complete a video rather than showing the elapsed time. So the platform is providing users with incomplete information. To conclude, in this work we propose a typology that details characteristics, impacts and strategies of attention capture damaging patterns. We identify three main areas for future works that are also, that are also a way to exemplify how the typology may be used in practice. First, we see value in studying attention capture damaging patterns across different domains and interfaces, going beyond social media and graphical user interfaces. Second, we see our typology as a promising starting point to establish new procedures for evaluating existing interfaces and also supporting designers in adopting patterns that preserve and respect the attention of the users. And finally, we hope that our work will give rise to new regulations and policies, something that is already happening for dark patterns that lead to financial and privacy harm. Uh, while deceptive designs may be easier to regulate, here the main open challenge is understanding how we can regulate seductive designs. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention.